Let me know. 
You are our Father. Teach us, Heavenly Father, that we may know you more. Teach us, Father, that we may know how to speak right. Teach us, Father, that we may know how to pray. For indeed, your God will never change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Fill us, Heavenly Father, with your Spirit, that we may walk according to your will. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yes, we may take our seats. Thank you. Once I was a child, the child of my mother, I thought like a child, spoke like a child, a mere infant, from my father's house, but now I'm mature, I am put away of sorrow. Once I was a child, a child of my mother, I felt like a child, spoke like a child, I feel a refund from my father's house. And now I'm a child, I am a child. 
thank God for a wonderful time in his presence. Unless you grow to maturity, you can never acquaint yourself with the Lord. For those who submit themselves to God are those who have come to know who God is. For when you are still an infant, you cannot relate with God well. For you are unable to speak right. The heavenly language is for those who are mature. Those who eat bones and not those who are still feeding on milk. For the wisdom of God is too deep for those who are still infants. For often you see that in their prayers, you know, when you pray, for a carnal mind, fill their prayers with worldly desires. For many find it very difficult to pray. It takes effort for many to pray. When you seek to arrange your prayer in an orderly manner, and sometimes you even forget what you want to say. For to those who are carnally minded, it is only when one prays with eloquence that they are effective prayers. When they fill their prayers with words, a list of requirements to them that is a fervent and effectual prayer. They measure effective prayer by the length of time that it takes them to pray. The amount of words and how eloquent they are. If it were so, what of Moses, a man who was known to stammer, Would he be as eloquent as you are finding himself with speech deficiency? Many take it to be a mark of a good prayer when they are flowing in eloquence and the vocabulary that they use to them that is effective prayer. For they think God can only hear them when they eloquently present their requests and often demanding or claiming their rights before God. And to them, that is what is prayer all about. No wonder why many will tell you, those who say they are prayer warriors, will tell you that uh, praying in the spirit is praying in tongues. So when they pray, bara, 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 they say they are 
praying effectively, a prayer that is heard by God. For to them that is praying in the Spirit, for unless you pray according to the will of God, you can never be heard. This is the reason why the Lord says, you do not have because you don't ask. When you ask, you ask amiss. So that whatever you have, you get. You may spend it to gratify your own human pleasures. To indulge yourself in worldly pleasures. You know that book of James 4, read from verse 4. Unless your prayer is consistent with the will of God, there is no communication at all. It is only when our prayers are according to the will of God that we be in communication with God. It is not just praying in a tongue, but it is about praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. For praying in a tongue is not the end in itself. It is a means to an end. When you pray in a tongue, in other words, praying in tongues, is praying in the Spirit, but not necessarily praying in the Spirit is praying in tongues. The lesser is in the greater. For praying in a tongue is in praying in the Spirit. What does God require of you? Is it praying in a tongue or praying in the spirit? Let us hear. What does God require of you? Is it praying in a tongue or in praying in tongues or praying in the spirit? Those who say praying in tongues, raise up hands. Those who say praying in the spirit, raise up hands. Ah, yes. Ah, this one, we pass this one. This is where many churches or many Christians have been led astray. Where they've been caused to think that praying in tongues is itself, is itself praying in the Spirit. Yes, indeed it is, but it is only one of the ways of praying in the Spirit. Just like if you want to pray in English, or pray in Shona, or pray in Debele. So also, that's why Paul says, I pray in the Spirit. He says, praying in the Spirit is not Praying in the, you know, praying in tongues. Like where he says, I speak in a tongue. When I speak in a tongue, my spirit prays. But my mind is not edified. Why? Because I am not praying with understanding. Therefore, I will pray with my spirit. And I will also pray with understanding. 
Meaning, unless you are able to interpret the tongue that you are speaking in, it's all useless. Okay, let's read that book of uh, 1 Corinthians 14 from verse 14. He says, for I pray in a tongue, my sp for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. For our mind, that's where the signal is sent for our understanding. It says, my mind is unfruitful unless you are able to discern what you are saying. It says, so what shall I do? I'll pray with my spirit. But I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit. But I will also sing with my understanding. So when you pray in a tongue, your spirit prays. But you must also pray with understanding. With words that you can understand. Not where you just go bra 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 bra. Yeah, you know, that's not what God is saying. Uh, you must be able to interpret because your spirit, yes, is edified. But you have no understanding of what you are saying. For tongues themselves are a gift given unto many. Like amongst the other gifts, I think there should be about nine of them. It is a gift, but it is not the fruit of the Spirit. Tongues are a gift, but not a fruit of the Spirit. You know, if you read that uh, 1 Corinthians 12, read from verse 8. For the Lord seeks those who pray, who worship him in the spirit and in truth. Remember, that's what the Lord says to that uh, Samaritan woman. When the Lord said, you Samaritans, you worship a God that you do not know. But we worship God that we know says, now, you will not, it's not about worshiping God on this mountain or this mountain, but it is those who worship God in the spirit and in truth. For God seeks such to worship him. Meaning, unless you worship God in the spirit, you can never be in fellowship with him. Unless you worship him, in the spirit and in truth. Okay, let's go to John. John 4. Let's read from verse 22. The Lord says, You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jew, Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshippers must worship him in, in the Spirit and in truth. Hmm? You know, when you look at the distinction for other, you know, Bibles, when it comes to in the spirit, it's capital letter S. And in truth, small letter T. God is spirit, and those who are to relate with him must be in the spiritual realm. For many are known 
to pray in the flesh and not in the spirit. Where they are, their requests are dictated to by their own ungodly desires. If you are to pray in the spirit, then you must guard your heart diligently, knowing that out of your heart flows the issues of life. Never allowing the evil desires of the flesh to determine the content of your prayer. You know, when the evil desires of the flesh determine your prayer, you'll find your prayer filled with all worldly desires to gratify the cravings of your flesh. Such are the prayers of the pagans who are always seeking worldly things. Yet we are told that our Father knows that we need them. So we do not need to go after the same things that those of the world run after. For our Father knows what we desire. Okay, let's go to uh, that book of Matthew, Matthew 6. Let's read from verse uh, 5. He says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. This is why many are embarrassed to pray. When they are told, pray in a public place like where they are, there's a gathering. You know, they feel, eh, hey, I cannot pray. Why? Because it is a prayer coming from the mind and not the heart. So when it's a prayer coming from the mind, you want your thoughts to be well organized. You want to ensure that you choose the right words with eloquence. But if it be a prayer from the heart, directed by the Spirit of God, when you pray in the Spirit, it's no longer you praying, but it is the Spirit of God praying. The reason why many feel ashamed to pray loudly, it is because they feel that, A, there are those around you who will be marking your prayer. You know, marking your prayer to see if you prayed right. For prayer is not talking to man, but talking to God. If you realize that in prayer, you are not talking to men, but to God. You will not mind what people around you will say. You will direct your prayer to God, no matter the language that you use. No matter whether or not you are eloquent or not. For it is not in how we present ourselves before God, as long as we pray in the spirit. Yet those who pray in the flesh, they are conscious of themselves and those around them. They are not conscious of God. If you be conscious of God, you can approach his throne of grace with boldness. Not claiming or demanding the promise of God, but where you plead with God his promises. Knowing that in Christ they are all yes and amen. You can plead with God 
his promises, proclaiming his promises upon your life. Not claiming or demanding, but where you live, God to do as he wills. Not your will, but let his will be done in your life. So he says here, yeah. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father. In other words, the Lord is saying, let your prayer be in secret. Not where you are like the Pharisees who love to be seen by many as a show that they are in a relationship with God. It says, pray to your father who, see, who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward, will reward you. This is the reason why you may be seated in a bus yet you are praying in your inner being. In your heart, you will be praying. Prayer in the spirit can be audible or it can be in silence without uttering a word. It says, and when you pray, do not keep on bubbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Like many, their measure of a prayer is the amount of words that they say. For them to qualify as a prayer warrior, they must be measured. If they can go non-stop one hour, they think, yeah, I prayed. Yeah. Eh? How long do you pray? Eh? When you say, yeah, today I've, I've really prayed. Ten minutes. Oh, ten minutes. Uh -uh. Uh, and before? Uh, two hours crying, beating walls. <laughs> <laughs> she says beating walls. Eh? It is not the amount of words that you utter. But it is about a relationship with God that matters. Are you in communion with God or you are just speaking to the air, you know, ba, 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 ba. like the pagans do. That's what I've been told here, he says. And when you pray, do not keep on bubbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. He says, he knows what you need before you ask him. So why claim it or demand it from God when he already knows? Imagine your child coming to you and saying, hey, it is my right to have school fees. Huh? I demand. I demand school fees. You must pay it. But it's my right. Huh? Can you imagine? This is why that our word is misused where we are told that from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence and violent men take it what? By force. This is where men will say, I demand, I demand, I claim, I demand in prayer. It says here, yeah. this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Will, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For when he says, let your kingdom come. Where? And he says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, the presence of God on this earth. And his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So when you submit to God in surrender, only then can you be led by the Spirit of God. For when we approach the throne of God in boldness, it is not about demanding or claiming from God. But it is about having confidence derived from a relationship with God where we have confidence to know that God hears us and to know that he knows what we need even before we ask him. Asking and claiming are two different things. Asking and demanding are di two different things. For you cannot be saying, I'm making a request when you are claiming or demanding. They, that is different. If you are to request God in prayer, you cannot go on to demand or claim. For many fill their prayers with demands. They fill their prayers with claims. They claim from God. For to them, they think they've got an entrenched right. That's you, eh? Tell your neighbor, tell yourself, praying in the Spirit is not necessarily praying in tongues. Those who pray in the Spirit are those who have been filled with the Spirit of God. Even as the Lord says through Paul, says when you have put on the full armor of God to be able to stand on that evil day, then you can pray in the Spirit always, consistently. It is only those, let me read that book of Ephesians 6 from verse 18, but let's read it from verse 10. Ephesians 6. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, which is the word of God. With the bracelet, you know, remember, by the word of God, everything consists by the power of his word, by his powerful word, everything what? Consists. Everything is kept in place by his word. By his word. He says, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can quench with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests 
With what? With all kinds of prayers and requests. Pray in the spirit. He didn't say pray in tongues. Because many feel, ah, because I don't speak in tongues, so I'm not a child of God. Eh? When, what they'll be telling is, makata, 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 makata. It's okay, yes. If God has endowed you with, this, with the gifts, tongues are a gift from God. Not everyone can speak in tongues, but everyone can speak, can, can pray in the spirit. Everyone. Every child of God can pray in the spirit, but not necessarily in the tongue. In a tongue. Praying in the spirit does not necessarily mean praying in a tongue. You can pray with understanding. If you cannot understand English, pray in Shona. You, can, you are still praying in the spirit. As long as your prayer is consistent with the word of God. And as long as your prayer is consistent with the will of God. So he says here. Yeah. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's prayer, for all the Lord's people. Why do you need to be alert and always watching? Because, because Satan never surrenders. He never quits. You ought to persevere in prayer. Why? Because Satan, our, advers our adversary, he never quits until he's destroyed. You'll never surrender. You ought to be alert always. Why? Because the devil is always prowling around, seeking whom you can devour. Let it be not yourself. Be alert, be sober, and always watch and pray. Why? Because Satan, the devil, that foolish one, is always prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. Him resist by standing firm in faith. Let's read that 1 Peter 5 from verse 6. Unless you pray in the Spirit, you are not praying according to the will of God. This is the reason why the Lord says, if you remain in me and my word remains in you, then you can ask anything and it will be done for you. Anything. That's what the Lord says. So that you may bear fruit. Fruit that is what? Lasting. Okay, let's go to John, John 15. From verse 7. It says, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Meaning, unless your prayer is consistent with the will of God, you can never have an answered prayer. It says, whatever you wish, you may ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. We ask God in prayer. We ask God in prayer. It is only in prayer that we ask God. Many. 
you have lost hope. All because they think their prayers are not being answered. Yet the reason why there is no answer, it is because they are praying amiss. They are not praying according to the will of God. Or they lose hope all because they are impatient. Yet the Lord says, hope is not hope unless you hope for that which is yet to be. No one can hope for that which is already there, which is already in existence. For the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God makes intercessions for us, intercedes for us with God, with groanings that cannot be uttered. He prays for us. For the Spirit of God knows the mind of God. We know not what to pray for. We ourselves do not know what to pray for. This is the reason why all you can do is to make your request unto God. Make your request unto God. Not demands or claims, but it's only the Holy Spirit of God that can pray for us before God according to his will. Okay, let's go to that book of Romans. Romans 8. I want to read from verse 24. It says, For in this, for in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is, not, is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he which searches our hearts know the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. We have been called according to his purpose. It is the spirit of God that intercedes for us with God with groanings that cannot be uttered. For it is the spirit that searches our hearts and our minds which who knows the mind of God. So when we know that the Spirit of God intercedes for us, we would know that no matter the circumstances, they all work for our good. Why? Because we love God and we are the called according to his purpose. If you are called according to God's purpose and you love him, you will know that no matter the circumstances, God means well. Yet the challenge with many is our prayers are determined by our own evil desires. This is the reason why, you know, in this book of Jude, Jude 10. Eh? Jude has got how many books? <laughs> okay, Jude 1. <laughs> Where he says, remember the apostles of the Lord, what they foretold. That in the last times, in the last days, there are those who are scoffers. The scoffers will come following their own ungodly desires. Such are those who cause divisions amongst you, who follow their natural instincts. Say so they follow their own natural instincts. But as for you, building yourselves on your most holy faith, 
praying in the spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God. In order for you to receive the mercy of Christ when he brings us into eternal life. Yet you must have mercy on those who doubt. You know, there are those who doubt. Have mercy. Have mercy on them. With some even snatch them from the fire. You know, like snatching them from the fire. But let your mercy be mixed with fear. So that you, you even hurt their claws. Which has been corrupted by the flesh. You know, hurting even their claws. So that if they say, oh, I will give you, you know, a claws. Refuse. That's what, you know, in that book of Jude is saying. Why? Because there are those who follow ungodly desires. But you, by keeping yourselves in the love of God, build up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Spirit. Meaning, walk in the Spirit. It is only those in the spiritual realm who relate with God. Okay, let's go to Jude. Jude from verse 17. It says, But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. Those who, who follow mere natural instincts, they do not have the spirit of God. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. To bring you to eternal life. Praying in the spirit. Not in tongues. But praying in the spirit. Yet you go to these churches. We tell you. Hey, if you cannot speak in tongues. It means you are not a child of God. Who says? Nonsense. Praying in the spirit. Not praying in a tongue. No. Praying in the spirit. For tongues will cease. Tongues will be stilled. In time. It says here. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear. Hating even the clothes stained by, cor by corrupted flesh. Hating even clothes stained by corrupted flesh, flesh. Indeed there are those who are being led astray. Who cause division in the church. Who follow their own natural instincts. Those are the ones. That who are being referred to here. But as for those who are in Christ. We must pray in this spirit. Okay let's just go to this. Uh, you know that 1 Corinthians 12. From verse 8. It says, to one that is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues. Huh? 
this is not the fruit of the Spirit. So when the Spirit intercedes for us, He helps us in our weaknesses. We know not what to pray for. The challenge is, when we pray, it's making demands, it's making claims. Yet the Lord says, make your requests known unto God. Make your requests known unto God. In prayer and supplication, make your requests what? Known unto God. Make your requests. Not your claims, not your demands, but your requests. Make your requests known unto God. Your requests, not demands. Your requests, not claims. Your requests, knowing that God knows what you need even before you ask. For when it is a request, you will leave it to the will of God. You know a request? When I say, my brother, can I have a pen? A pen. It is up to him to give me or not. And it is up to him to know when to give me that pen. But when it's a demand, I will not even ask. I will just snatch it from him. Why? Because I think I've got a right to his pen. But if I'm requesting, I will wait upon him patiently. Until he sees it fit to give me the pen at his own time. If he says no, it's up to him. So unless our prayers are founded on requests and petitions, we will lay claims before God. We will lay demands before God. Prayer is not demanding. Prayer is not claiming. But prayer is requesting God to do according to his will in our lives. So it says, all these are the work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Meaning not everyone can speak in tongues. But we all can speak with understanding. We all. We all can speak. We can all pray with understanding. For when you pray with understanding, you are still praying in the spirit. As long as you cling to God's promises. As long as you pray in accordance with God's promises. You are praying in the spirit. For when we pray in the spirit, we will build ourselves on our most what? Holy faith. We build ourselves in our most holy faith. Praying in the spirit, meaning holding on to God's word. Let your prayer be filled with scripture let your prayer be filled with the promises of God, but let his will be done in your life. Submit yourself to God fully, knowing that he does as he wills at his own time. Yet when it's a demand or a claim, you dictate the time. You dictate how God should act upon your life. When it's a request, you leave it to God. You will leave it to God. Okay, let's go to uh, that Matthew 26. Let's read from verse 36. It says, Then Jesus went with his, with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. When he said to them, then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, 
but as you will. Yet not what as I will, but as you will. He made a request. He never demanded. He says, my father, if it is possible, may this cup, may. He says, may this cup be taken from me. May leaves room for the will of God. In other words, he said, if it be your will, may it pass. He says, be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Those who watch and pray are able to say no to all wickedness. They will not easily fall into temptation. This is what the Lord is telling us here. He says, yet not my will, but let your will be done. In other words, he's saying, do it according to your own time and according to the way that you want to do it. This is the reason why he says, I opened my, uh, my ears to the Lord and I never turned my back from those who, who beat me. See, I was, not, I was not rebellious to God. I never resisted those who beat me. That's what the Lord says. Why? Because he allowed the will of God to prevail over his life. Yet prayers often, when you are in challenges, take away this sickness, Lord. Take away this sickness. Eh. Eh. I claim it. I claim it. I, I claim this one. Are you requesting? What if it is the will of God for you to go through that sickness? What if it is the will of God through to, for you to go through that lack? Why not leave it to God? Let your, make your request known as, Lord, I want to be healed, but let it be your will, not mine. Why not make requests before God? Why do you demand? Okay, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 15. From verse 5. He says, Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting because the sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. So the Lord opens my ears. I have not, be, I have not been rebellious. Neither have I turned my back from those who beat me. So, if you be of God, you will make a request in prayer. You will make your, your request known unto God. Okay, let's go to Philippians. Philippians 4. Let's read from verse 6. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. He never said present your demands or your claims. Present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Why does it guard your hearts and your minds? Because you've got the assurance that God knows what you need. You will do according to his will. For when you pray to God, you know that he has heard you. And therefore, you've got the petitions that you've requested from him. You know that whatever you've asked God for, he has heard you. And therefore, you have your requests and your petitions that you presented before God. 
Isn't that what we are told to say? This is the confidence that we have that if we pray according to his will, he hears us. According to his will, he hears us. If we pray according to the word of God, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know that we have got the request that we ask of him. You know that uh, 1 John 5 from verse 14. Praying in the spirit is what matters for fellowship with God, for communion with God. Knowing that God knows what you need even before you ask him. Even before you ask, he knows. The challenge with many is we make demands, we claim we never allow God to do as he wills according to his own time. When it's a claim or a demand, you know, when I, you go, you, it's like you feel you are, God is indebted to you when you are making a claim. You know, if you lend someone some money, you can go and make a claim, isn't it? You claim that money back. You can demand that money, isn't it? But if it's a request, you know that it is up to that person from whom we are, from whom we are requesting. It is up to him or her to give it to you at their own time, not at your own time. Those who must ask God in prayer must learn to be patient. Even as you are told, to be as patient as a farmer. To learn from, a, from the farmer who waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. He waits for the autumn and spring rains. We must be patient too. We, ourselves. We must be patient in prayer. Okay, let's go to, to James. James 5 from verse 7. He says, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Unless you be patient, you can never receive from God. This is the reason why we are encouraged to be joyful in hope, patient in suffering, faithful in prayer. No matter what it is, when you pray in the Spirit, it is no longer you praying, but the Spirit of God with groanings that cannot be uttered. We know not what to pray for. We can make requests before God, but leave it to God. Have you ever come to a point where you want to pray, but you just find yourself crying? Eh? No words. Eh? Especially when you set your heart upon the promises of God. You know, when you go into the word and you just think about the Lord, what he has said about you, you know, Often, you cannot utter words. You just find yourself unworthy. You know, when you feel that uh, unworthy and submissiveness, you just find yourself crying before the Lord. And often, such prayers are answered instantly. Not where you list, Lord, I want car. Lord, I want house. Lord, I want marriage. Lord, I want... Uh, a wife like this, I want a husband like this. Let the will of God be done in your life. Let your requests known unto God and leave everything to him. Let your requests known unto God. Make your requests known to him and let him do 
as he wills. Not what you, you will, not according to your will, but according to God's will. According to God's will. For many are so anxious. You know, I cannot speak in tongues, so I'm not a child of God. You want to go, para, 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 buru, 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 para, para. You know, then you think, hey, these people, hey, they, they really, hey, God is here. Hmm? Makata, 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 you admire them, isn't it? How many admire those ones? Before, before now. Eh? Eh? You felt you wanted tongues, eh? Eh? It's good to desire, yes, to speak in tongues, because it's a gift. You can pray to God to say, Lord, as you have said in your word, you know, I request the gift of what? Tongues. It's not a sin. But when you are speaking in a tongue, Paul says, it would be better for me to speak one word with understanding than to speak many words in tongues which no one can, can, can understand. If you go to certain churches, you hear this corner, para, 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 that one, buru, 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 that one, do, 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 yeah, that, yeah. you know. And they tell you, hey, it's a, uh, we are, we are praying in the spirit. And you know, one who now cannot speak in the tongues, they will feel so out of place. As a result, they start to pretend, para, 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 bu, bu, bu. They, they listen, because you can imitate it. You can listen, para, para, buru, 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 para, 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 buru, buru. Then you also, para, para, buru, buru, para, para, buru, buru, buru. <laughs> eh? This is what is happening in many churches. Praying in the spirit is praying in a tongue or praying with understanding according to the will of God. Let the spirit of God give you the right utterance for you know not what to pray for. God has already given us all things. If his son not sparing, how much more? Can he give you that which you desire together with Christ Jesus, his son? You know that, uh, you know, Romans 8 from verse 31. He has already given us all things. When we make our request to God, we are merely making an affirmation. Or in other words, we are confirming our faith in him that we know that God is faithful. We pray to God in good or in bad alike. We give him thanks. This is the reason why we are told to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. It says rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances. Giving thanks to God for this is the will of God concerning you. Give thanks to God in all circumstances, whether your life is going downhill or uphill, give him thanks. The challenge is we want to pray our own way. As a result, you are trying to put so much effort, eh? you know, your own effort. It's like going uphill, you know, when you pray. You struggle. Surely, if, if, if it be the spirit, Helping us in our infirmities. You will not struggle with prayer. Okay, let's read uh, that book of 1 Thessalonians. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians 5 from verse 16. It says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. But test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Very interesting there. It says, do not quench the spirit. Not like when you are prompted to, to pray, for instance. You just say, ah, no, I will not pray. You are quenching the spirit. 
when you are pro prompted to do something by the Spirit of God and you feel, I know, you are quenching the Spirit. He says, do not, pre do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test, eh, test them all and hold on to what is good. Meaning, there's good prophets and there's what? Bad prophets. He says, do not treat prophecies with, with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Ah, my sister, you are going to have a car. Is that good or bad? Is that evil or good? Good. Huh? Good. It's what? It's good. Yeah, fool. <laughs> eh? She says it's good. Is that not foolishness? I go and talk to you through it. Eh? Eh? <laughs> eh? Is that eh? Eh? Speak through the mic. Eh? It's not good. It's good. It's not good. Eh? But you said good. Or? Eh? She said good. Where a man's treasure is, so is their heart. So why should I direct your heart towards a worldly thing? Is that a good prophecy? Huh? Eh? Where instead of focusing on Christ, I'm directing you on on worldly things. What does the word say? Seek ye what? First the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will what? Will follow. So do you really need to Hey, Lord, I want a car. I want, eh? Yes, there may be a need. You can tell God you need the car in order for you to go from one place to the other, isn't it? Eh? Eh? And go and worship him. You may need that car. But surely, a prophet to come, you are going to have a car. Eh? It's, it's not a good prophecy because I'm telling you what you are already guaranteed. It's already said. But if I tell you, yeah, you are going to have a car, you are now, you anxiously now wait for it. And even those who have left you, not given you a lift before, say they will see me. <laughs> Is car, does car have anything to do with your salvation? No. It does not have anything to do with your salvation. So this is why it says, that which is good, hold on to it. But that which is evil, reject. If they tell you, hey, we are going to have a guy, so what, say what? I know it already. Remember with uh, Elisha, when I was told, your, your master is going to leave. Leave, he said what? Hey, hold your peace, I know it. I know he's going to leave. So why tell me that which I know already that I'm going to have? Other than for you, to present a snare before me. You know, a trap. So this is the reason why it says, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Test them all. How? The testing yardstick is the word of God, is the will of God. See what the word of God says. You cannot test anything other than putting it side by side with the word of God. He says, test them all. Hold on to that which is good. Reject every kind of evil. Isn't evil desires are founded on what? Worldly things. And worldly things are all designed in a, in a manner that causes us to lust after them. Remember the world and everything in it. Isn't the Lord says, anyone who loves the world or anything in it, the love of God is not in them. Car, is it in heaven? Eh? House, is it in heaven? But it is in the world, isn't it? So if one causes you to go astray, it is not a good prophecy. Many you have been led astray. That's why they are so, you know, you know, you can desire, earnestly desire the gift of the Spirit, yes. 
among those gifts is speaking in tongues. But, but praying in the spirit is not a gift. Every child of God, you see, that one, it comes with sonship. It comes in, with being a child of God. Praying in the spirit. Meaning you must pray according to the will of God. His word. Hold on to his promises. Plead his promises over your life. You know, the promises of God, for they are all yes and amen. They are all fulfilled in Christ Jesus. You know, that 2 Corinthians 1 from verse 18. They are all yes and amen. They are all what? Yes and amen. All of them. So when you pray in the spirit, you pray with understanding. You know, those who are in the spiritual realm are those who are joined together with God. And the spirit of God helps them in their weaknesses with groanings that cannot, cannot be uttered. He intercedes for us. Can you go wrong where the Spirit of God intercedes for you? Surely he is the same God, isn't it? He is God giving utterance to his Spirit to pray for you. He knows your season. He knows where you are. This is the reason why we are told that Everything is beautiful at this time. Meaning, at the appointed time of God, everything is beautiful. Everything. And therefore, if it's beautiful at this time, you can afford to give thanks unto the Lord in all circumstances. Now, Ecclesiastes 3 from verse 11. Those who pray in the Spirit... Praying in the spirit, it is the end. The means to the end is praying with understanding and praying with the spirit and praying with, with my spirit. When you pray with your spirit and pray with your understanding, the end is praying in the spirit. Meaning, there are two ways of praying in the spirit. Either you pray in, in tongues, which is praying with your spirit, or you pray with understanding, with a language that those who are, who are humans like yourself can also understand. Not bara bara bara. Uh -uh. Two ways: pray with your spirit. Or pray with your understanding. But if you pray with your spirit, then you must seek to understand it. You must pray to God to give you understanding so that you pray with your spirit and you also pray with what? Understanding. Sing with your spirit and also sing with your with understanding. How many, you know, where you know all are like feeling out of place to say, but say, my child of God, you are even doubting that you are a child of God because you hear praying in tongues and say, hey. so I, I've never spoken in tongues. How many have ever spoken in tongues? Raise up hands. Huh? Just look at her. Uh, um, but do you know whether they were true tongues or not? Huh? Now, can you speak in tongues now? Eh? No, I was just imitating what others were saying. Oh, you're imitating? Yes. Because we're in a church that says it is only when you, you speak in tongues that you're a child of God. Yes. And you felt out of place. Oh, we were told that when you are praying in tongues, that's when you'll be praying in spirit. That's when you'll be heard. Yes. Eh? You too. I, I never spoke in tongues because uh, sometimes I realized that 
when I joined a certain church, there were people who were speaking in tongues. Then all of a sudden, others joined and they were speaking the same tongues. And then I heard this other song, I think it's on internet, and there was this girl who was in the choir who was singing the song. And she would sing the song word for word. And when that original, whoever played the song, would speak in tongues, she would speak in the same tongues. So then I said, ah, <laughs> this is dangerous. Speaking in the spirit, in the spirit, meaning in the realm of the spirit. Eh? In the spirit, meaning in the realm of the spirit is for those who are in the realm of the spirit, where God is. Because God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in the spirit and in truth. In the spirit and in what? True. Truth. And truth of God is the word of God. And our prayers must be from the heart. Your prayer must flow from the heart. And only when the eyes of your heart have been enlightened can you pray from the heart. Prayer of the spirit is not a prayer of the mind. You pray with your heart and you understand with your mind. Pray with your heart and you understand with your mind. But often, when we go to pray, it's always our mind. Where we seek to reason. What am I saying? Ah, oh, I've made a mistake. Ah, and there are those who are mocking you too. Ah, this one cannot pray. And they actually choose to say, Ah, hey, you, you pray for three hours. You pray a warrior. <laughs> eh? Yeah, the spirit of God is not in that person. It is not the amount of word that determines whether or not the spirit of God is in you. You must have a relationship with God. Praying in the spirit is praying according to the will of God. And those who are children of God are known to pray in the spirit. May God bless you. May bless his word. Yes, we can just stand up. Let's just stand up. Okay, she says we must sit down. Is this one? Sit down. Not me, but him, yeah. Good morning, church. Are you shining? Yes, we are shining. Keep shining. Our names are Tendai Moyo and Farai Moyo. And this is our daughter, Tatenda Moyo. On the 5th of June, our daughters were involved in an accident. And it was really bad. It was around 3.30 p.m. So we got a call. And as soon as we heard that, we headed to where they were admitted. And 
Along the way, they transferred it to the provincial hospital. Fortunately, we always carry our, the blood of Jesus in the anointing soil in our car. It's in the bottle already. So when we arrived at the hospital, um, we went where she was being admi uh, administered. So we took the anointing oil. Where water, she was being attended to. Where she was being attended to, sorry. So we took the anointing water and put it in the... Anointing water, where, where did sorry, you come from? The blood of Jesus. We put it in the... What do you call it? Sanitizer. So we entered with the sanitizer. We, we put it in on our hands. You can speak in Shona, it's okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, 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 Akati babana mai mana kubara. Acha gona kuzo taura. Acha gona kuzo famba. Shaka naka. Acha gona kujika. Apana chinu cha acha gona kuzo hita ega. So she needs an operation. Eh, and we have to do it. Neku kasika. Achiri kuruwazi wa asata ambo pora. But that's all right. No wanda. No bata kungwa ramba. Otishingwa na mata about it. No, but that's na baba, but marriage at certain times. What I am going to take a move on. That is, that operation in marriage. I am going to say, it's not about money. It's about the health. It's about the life. You should marry. You should get into a marriage. As if you are going to do it for free. So, but pataka, pataka, so I am going to teach you. I am going to teach you. How you go around. You need to produce. You need to get into a marriage. Awe ya kutaye, ndo pa tanzi, awa titi muno fana kuenda kudandaro, kudandaro kuno padaro wa 1.4 for 4 days, muna rima isi yu. E, ndo kwa nchia itira operation yangu, ndo pa tasu ofunza, mari yaki, taa kwa rari, ndo pa tawana wati mari yaki angairi, iya aida 17,000 US, and then mana statisticians, ari tu, aida 5,000 each. Pa mwe chete ya zaita 27,000 US. Ye operation chete. Pasina ye ICU ne mime mishonga mbiya cha zoana after operation. Saka tashika kuparenya tuwa. Chire mbaka vatiti futinga ende ku X-ray. CT scan anga itukwa kwa mtari. Ainda ku X-ray. X-ray ye ya kawe arati za kuti. From the CT scan pampane disk number 5 and 6. Janga jwa pesa na jwa garana. I mean, bracket number five and six. Disc right kwa displaced. Saka, eh, anga ane fracture pa C2 bracket. Saka, pa kufamba kuenda kuchipatara. Mwari waka ngo ita oswa waka ita because saka nga ta is the blood of Jesus and anointing soil. Saka pawaka shi, pawaka famba. Operation ye pa bracket number five and six. Ya kangwa itika. Ndafshika ini ni wakantiti enda ina ye ku X-ray. Ta enda ku X-ray. X-ray ya kuwele ingwa. Ndaka wana uti. Five and six and school wana shandambo wana pa CT scan. Wanangora mba ndaka nyarara. Chile mba vanditi imi mada imi. Diana told out bracket five and six is Jaga Garan and Diana told out better displacement. Nigati, the Chiremba, and the Tara Stara Chiremba. No, 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 he can't say that. He's my senior, he's my superior. That one is my teacher, Mazinswa. And got out the so way is it, Papa can in Greek. But I got to ah, son, do you believe in miracles? Well, if you don't, that's your problem because in any I do. The miracle worker, yes, he died, but he rose again and he's still doing the miracles. Doba simka bango famba famba bata. Sorry, madam, no zashwe ninge shangwe itika unengo wangu wandiru wanibasa. Marata, it is well. 
Saka taka gara mchipatara. Chingwa ita usha. Taingwa ita. Um, two days later, arimomo hospital. Ch wana chire mbaka zote. Ah, shwe operation nga chimbo mira. Tinenge tichuona nisha. Nga chita since grafura ke rikur kuira. I, I, we have got nothing to worry. There are Richard Zika. Tinga data ti ti data option operation. Saka ta gara ta three uh, three weeks are my see you. Tango rambati chi shandi sa blood of Jesus and anointing sorry I do every day. And the kuparanya tu kwa kwa visit once, but it's so so. Nenyasha zamari. Taigo na kuye na gana four or five times. Taigo na ngono ti. Ah, chiremba ndu uda kukula kuti. Apana ere mshonga ya mamu nyorela. Saka ova vati. Kachipinde itu one. Ono ta sa history. Ota apana. Ah, she's doing great. Haribu shiruku shanda. Shiruku it. Tobut. Dagazo uzi kwa one ume chiremba. Saka isusu ofuti our prayer. Taona kuti because that was going to say, I shall say, our prayer now was Mari Isaivan Panjimbo. When I check with her name, Biri Enyu, Queen Gotim Biri Enyu, you won't make Sagatagaso, Sangana, no much remembered of that. See, ah, uh, when you would have Kurumi de Gopora, Sagai private ness, my nesses are no more, they are overwhelmed in the bus. Saka muka chaga private ness. Shino kubatire kutano piwa mshonga nengu wano sanduru wano jikiswa. Shese shino famba. And dofa tadaro. She show in three days. Taka batatanga kuwana shanduku. Manaka tanga kushinura. Kuserera kushimba kwa anga kaita. Isusuo pa sanitizer ya taka siya kwa bedzi yaki. Taka anga taka isa the blood of Jesus. Ya taka mimina. Ma, taka taka sangan sani soil. Kwa kuchi mimina. Na anointi soil. Kwa kuchi mimina. Kwa kuchi some sanitize. Doba ta siya ta isa pa bedi paki. Then in sipo ya igezeswa. Nyaka tora something very sharp. Doba nda pia sa kuda isa onda furapu. Doba nda isa anointi soil. Vanda nama. Shakari. Doba nda te. Nika isa mu. Because I shan't see what I've seen. Can I say so? I know so. Tanga manis kuti. I watch this. Chi chi chi. No wonder that he kuna sister. Watch over that sister. Since kuti asai tema bed sores. Don't you think kuti tinoda lotion? So can say eh, it might a good idea, mad. But I know tanga lotion. I anga ine jinu jinenge o soil like. And that so I told you that nyore kuisa anointing soil. Saka takaita within three days mwananga to shanduka zimwe zino chikisa aka vato discharge tava tawya na ye kumba ndi ye wa muruku wana wa ya kanza wafamba ito. Zino chikisa kana watu shakanaka? I mean ku... Zino chikisa nyika ino chika anditi? Asa tichiki. I mean ku kuchika kwe kuchika mwari. All right. Kuchika kwe kuchika mwari kwa kuona ukuru wa mwari. Saka njiyewa muru kuona akuto famba. Ano taura, ano jika ega, ano geza ega. Na sato shikapano waka geza ega. Hallelujah, yes. Ok, let's just hear from here briefly. Good morning. Inini, I don't have much to say. Because shushinji shakaitika, I don't remember anything. Ndandiri ine koma the whole month he say yavanga yanga ishtaro na mama saka nda nda kato songwe ta shokunzwa nda kubunza nda to buda nda kuto wafunzoti is it true kuti nda kakuara what happened ne shaka ngo daro daro but morning na wangu nda eva na e akato buda na kana scratch or anything. Akatu kudari asna kukuvara. Ndindaka kukuvara chiti. Yes. So what do you want to say just to others? All right. 
to others in Ruda Kuti Vasokuti Kuna Mari Kudenga, if you just believe Jinoitik and the Kuti, the situation here and Dandir Vano Ziva Vano Vano Tonditi Ah Kuramakoka Itaka Kuna Mari Unofano Namata Mari. But and this is we could what happened. But in order to know the situation, never smooth the Ravaka van Wakawanda, even my friends, never very close to Kandiri Wakawana, the situation and Andir Waka Simuzika through that. You see, what she's saying is, uh, yes, circumstances testify the goodness of God. But see, a carnal mind will see bad in a boy she suffered. And yet, it worked what? For the glory of God. Her life. Which has caused others who did not know who God is to also what? reflect on their lives. You know, as they see the glory of God in her life. Uh, so how do you feel now? Ah, now I'm fine. Da, akuto kwa nisa kufamba, ku ku mashuru kundansi ngao kwa nisa kuita anything. Kana kufamba, kana kujiga, o ku kujige sandega, kana upeka ndega. But now, ishese jojoj, I can do ishese by myself. You know, God is faithful. Yes. You know, your challenges does not who God does not change who God is. Mariva no go ramba bari mari. Musi uchweche ni ako ya uri ona mari. Amen. You know, you know, kwamuri. Zimunguva mariva no pumita zimwe zinu kuti ziiti ke. Kuitira kuti tione glory yao pa upenyo wedu. And I'm sure this has changed their prayer lives. Vose se mori. You know, when you are weak, then the strength of God is made what? Perfect. In your weakness. That's when he will manifest what? His glory. So what do, what do you want the Lord to do for you now? For now, and I can't see for the review and again the last time, Vaganditi, you have to undergo an operation for my neck, but in in and this could add that. And I believe with my river shandy love, she no go so got the Rissica Jega Passina in operation Iripo. You know, she says. Vacancy operation, but in and and that, and it, but you must always leave room for the will of God. Huh? Yes. We present our, our request before Him, before God, and allow Him to do your, His will. Our desire, your desire, your desire is what for the healing, you know, and God knows what He needs. Huh? But we submit to God, to his will. You know, but sometimes you go to hospital and say, ha, injection, I don't want. But, you know, what if it's the will of God? Remember, it is the spirit that knows the mind of God. And it is the spirit of God that prays for us according to the will of what? Of God. It's we don't know what to pray for. Many with my request, I wonder, you know, they are misplaced our requests. But, uh, you know, God being who he is, as children, dearly loved children, we can bring, no matter how foolish the request, we can bring it before God. But provided you then say, let your will what? Be done. It removes the demand. It removes what? The claim. Yes, now God bless you. God is faithful. Yes, yes. I've seen you this far. 
So you will what? What he has started, you'll finish. Mm. Can you imagine now she's struggling to walk, isn't it? You cannot even imagine if it was you. If you get into this, you cannot even think that you may sometime get into that kind of situation, isn't it? If we say stand up, okay, stand up, stand up. Easy, eh? Sit down. Eh, easy. Imagine you want to stand and you just, just get stuck on the chair, eh? Imagine if I say, now stand up now. You try, you feel, eh? You cannot stand. What would you think? Eh? Trouble, isn't it? Eh? You start to be worried. Life in this world is so uncertain to those who put their trust in worldly things. For many who put their trust in their own wealth, power, and might, in time they will be disappointed because they've set their hearts on temporary things which are passing away. Can I just stand up? Say so whatever in my life that is not of God. Though my enemy surrounds me with teeth like shark and spears, they seek to destroy me, yet they all stumble and fall. I saw the giants and the mountains, yeah, I put my trust in my goal. 
Though my enemy surrounds me with teeth, lungs, against peace, they seek to destroy me, yeah, they all stumble and fall. I saw the giant in the mountains, yet I put my trust in my goal. When sudden disaster comes, I know you are Lord, the living God, God Almighty. I shall sing the holy, ever faithful Lord, Prince of Peace. Everlasting Father, true and holy, I look to Jesus Christ. When sudden, sudden disaster comes, I know you are Lord, the living God, God Almighty, righteous 